We're talking about disinformation and lies, and yet this week we had the Biological Reality Bill, which uh, I would have thought every MP could back because we're talking about biological realities. <laughs> but, of course, the Greens and Labor combined to vote against it. And interestingly, there were four Liberal senators, Alex, your colleagues, who also voted against this bill. How is that? How do we continuously have <laughs> Liberal MPs uh, crossing... Uh, and just spell out what the bill was saying? Well, it's, it's, it's a biological rea a reality bill. It's basically affirming biological realities. You're protecting women's sex-based rights. Well, two women's sexes, spaces. men and yeah. women. Pauline Hanson put this it this forward. This shouldn't be controversial, but uh, uh, you've got Liberal senators who continuously tend to uh, vote against these measures or, in this occasion, they didn't vote against it. They just weren't there to vote for it. They were missing in action. Yeah, and look, in many cases, people are paired. Uh, that's the first thing. So this was uh, actually a bill to amend the Sex Discrimination Act. And, of course, as many of your viewers would know, the Sex Discrimination Act was amended in 2013 uh, under the Gillard government in order to remove the definition of man and woman. Mm. Wow. Uh, not exactly controversial, I would have thought. And Pauline was seeking to effectively flick the switch back to the 2013 position, which, you know, I think is eminently sensible, frankly. Uh, and, look, that is the question. People, these are often taken as conscience votes inside the Liberal Party... Um, we have a mechanism to do that whereby people can cross the floor and there isn't, you know, the same sort of collective meltdown that we have in the Labor Party. But ultimately, uh, this is the very nub of why it is that we see the case tickle and giggle, which many people would be familiar with. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the, the fact that um, the definition of women uh, is not there inside the legislative framework allows uh, these platforms to be targeted sometimes, uh, you, you know, by people that... that that say they are transgender or whatever the case may be. So I, I think it's a very important position. Uh, I'm, you know, looking at other ways to, to adopt a similar sort of approach and we'll look to, to talk about that in, in the near future. But um, it really does need to be addressed. It's as simple as that. And also I might Absolutely. say on that, and of on course, that Alex, uh, issue, I think in two... It, Tony, carry on. Yeah, I'm just going to say, in relation to the 2013 Sexual Discrimination Act amendments... Many people would never have foreseen what came of that down the track 10 years later. The same can be said for combating misinformation mm. and disinformation. Here, here. We don't even know where this is going to end up at this stage. Absolutely. And, Alex, you, of course, famously went around asking all those politicians and bureaucrats, what is a woman, and none of them seem to be able to answer it, which uh, proves <laughs> the point. Can't wait to see you at CPAC, Alex. And in the meantime, please tell the car party room that they must not only oppose the misinformation bill, but they must promise to repeal it when you get into government next year.